What did the Romans use as toilet paper? A fascinatingly disgusting question, and one which needs to be probed more deeply. The ancient Romans used all sorts of implements to clean up after themselves. Pottery shards and rocks are known to have been used, for example, as well as water. Rags are not outside the realm of possibility, though as far as I'm aware, we have little evidence of that. But what I want to talk about here is perhaps the most infamous of all ancient toiletries, the sponge on a stick. To the extent that we can even talk about it, that is, which really is not all that much. Like so much else in this and earlier periods, our evidence comes in the form of scraps. As one irate viewer recently commented on one of my videos, this was just full of maybes, possiblys, ifs, and we don't knows. What the hell good is that? Yes, welcome to doing ancient history where we don't know jack because we lack sources. Mediterranean sea sponges were prized for most of ancient and medieval history, even retaining their value into the 19th century prior to widespread use of toilet paper for their, well, spongy properties. They were employed in kitchens, as general cleaning instruments, and of course in latrines. We don't have evidence of prices, but many historians and classicists have assumed that the sponge trade was widespread in the ancient world, drawing their conclusions from the presence of sponges in artwork and some textual sources. Public latrines were a common sight in Roman cities and forts. Sometimes they had heated floors, sometimes the seats were made of stone, sometimes of wood, but all of them featured the sponge. One of our best sources for firmly situating the sponge in the latrine is a passage from Seneca, who describes the death of a gladiator in the latrine in the following manner. While so engaged, he sees the stick of wood tipped with a sponge which was devoted to the vilest uses and stuffed it just as it was down his throat. Thus he blocked up his windpipe and choked the breath from his body. We know from this passage and a handful of others, as well as artwork actually depicting the action, that these sponges were used for cleaning up after relieving oneself and not for swabbing the toilet. If it was, the horror of Seneca's tale would not be nearly so acute. What we don't know is how often these were changed. It's probably safe to say that in smaller latrines or even private ones in individual homes, there was one sponge. In larger latrines, there would have been more, but how many is not clear, and it's not at all certain if they were sanitized. What we do have evidence of are creepy crawlies. In the act of wiping yourself clean, be careful. If you feel something tickling you, it's not your doctor's finger. It could be a roundworm hidden in the well-used sponge, which we have ample evidence of from the archaeology done at the site of Carnutum. Practically everyone there very likely suffered from parasites picked up from the latrines, fecal matter stacked up, and it wasn't always carried away. Sometimes, those drains got clogged. That means loss of appetite, abdominal pain, the leaching away of vital nutrients, literally, and potentially death. Potentially, in such a manner that even the sponges could not clean up the mess. So the next time you fantasize about wanting to go back in time, just remember, the modern world is not perfect, but you'll sure as hell miss the plumbing.